Hello guys, welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to solve exactly the same problem as in the previous video, but now instead of tackling the problem from an energy perspective, we're going to do it from uh, using just the Newton's law, right? So Newton's law of motion. So this, in this case here, it's exactly the same thing. I'm actually using the same page to show you. We're going to solve the same problem. The problem is the pulley system that we all have already solved again for different situations. Problem statement reads, the system shown is at rest when a constant 250 Newton force is applied to block A. Neglecting the masses of the pulleys and the effect of friction in the pulleys in between block A and the horizontal surface, determine the velocity of block B after block A has moved two meters and the tension in the cable. So obviously, answers have to be exactly the same. Our method, however, is going to change slightly. Okay, so let me skip all of this. We might want to copy the actual drawing. Okay, so quickly, I'm going to take advantage of this thing that's already drawn here, which is my axis system, right? So this guy and this guy. And I'm going to recall that we have one, two, three of the Y for every one of the X. So that, oops, that allows me to say that three of y b plus one of x a has to be a constant assuming the cable does not stretch so therefore the velocity three times the velocity of b plus the velocity of a has to be zero the derivative of a constant is zero but i'm going to write it one more time and go ahead and say the three times the acceleration of b plus the acceleration of a also has to be zero because of the same reason right deriving in respect to time the derivative of zero is zero Cool. So now let's look at our free body diagram. It's things written here. Let's go down. So free body diagram, we can look at for A and for B. For the case of A, we have, oh, and just to remind you, we determined that the uh, positive direction is downwards from the beginning and leftwards is positive as well. So very important to always define what you're considering positive from the start and just stick with it. Cool, so we have uh, the 250 Newton force to the left, we have the tension to the right, we have weight of A downwards, and we have normal force upwards. We are interested in finding the acceleration, so our game plan here, right, if you haven't noticed yet, is find the acceleration of B. Once we do find it, and we know that's going to be a constant because F is a constant force, because F is a constant force, the acceleration of B is a constant, and if we find the acceleration of B, we can find velocity of B, after the two meters. Okay, that's the, the whole idea. So uh, to do that, what I'm going to do is write down the forces, the sum of forces on the x direction here for a, which is 250, my positive one, minus t, my negative one. This has to be equal to mass of a times acceleration of a, according to Newton's second law. For the case of b, we have one, two, three of the tensions upwards and we have the weight of B downwards. Just reminding you, three because we have one, two, three. And then if I sum my forces here on the y direction, my downwards is positive, so that means that YB minus three equals the mass of B times acceleration of B. Okay, so if we look at these two equations, we're gonna see that we have the tension as an unknown, and the acceleration of A and acceleration of B as unknowns as well. So we have two equations and three unknowns. To be able to get rid of one of them, we need to combine this equation as well. So this equation gives us the third equation that we would need to solve this problem. Okay, so what, how can we solve this? Well, quite straightforward. We're going to substitute where we have the acceleration of A. The mass of A is going to be equal to three times the acceleration of B. So now we only have two equations, two unknowns. So this here gives me that, you know, three times the tension will be equal to mass of B, acceleration of B, divided by, oh, sorry, minus the weight of B, and then I can take the mass out. So the mass of B is just the acceleration of B minus the acceleration of gravity. And I can substitute where I have mass of, uh, sorry, where I have the three tension divided by three. I can go ahead and do this over here. I'm gonna have 250 minus mass of B, gravity minus a b divided by three so just substituting the tension there and this has to be equal to minus three m a a b so let's speed up as i solve this part here cool 
Cool. So this guy here, mass of V is 25, mass of V is 30, mass of V is 25, oops, 25. We have everything we need. Plug the numbers in and we get that the acceleration of A is negative 1, 7, 11. Cool beans. So this, this makes sense, right? Because we expect B to go upwards, not downwards. So we decided that downwards is positive. So this is telling us that B, acceleration of B is upwards. So B is accelerating upwards. Oops, not positive, just upwards. Okay, cool, beautiful. So what do we do now? Well, now that we have the acceleration of V, we can go ahead and find the velocity of V, which we're looking for. So the velocity of V, to do that, what we can do is, well, acceleration is just how the velocity changes with the position. In this case, Y for B times the velocity, right? And to do that, we're just combining definition of acceleration and definition of velocity. Okay, so that means that therefore a dy equals v dv. And then we integrate on both sides. Here I'm going from y naught to y. And over here I'm going from v naught to v. Because my acceleration is constant, it leaves the integral and I just get uh, delta y. So just, you know, y minus y naught. I'm going to call that delta y, the distance that was that the uh, v moved. And here I'm going to have v b squared minus v naught v squared divided by two. In this case, the system starts from rest, so my V naught is now is zero, right? So for our case there, it's gonna be zero. So that means that, you know, this is ending up in Torricelli. That's exactly how Torricelli comes to be. So two times the acceleration of B times my delta Y will be equal to the velocity of V squared. So if I wanna find the velocity of V, all I need to do is multiply these fellows here. Now, delta Y, we've tackled this in the previous video, we can do it quickly again. To find delta y, what we're going to do is we're combining the velocity of the, the idea from the velocity of a and the velocity of b. So we're coming from this principle here. Just thing here on the side from the previous video. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're saying, well, you know, the velocity of a is just how dx is changing with time. So therefore, the integral of a dt as we go from 0 to t is equal to delta x, which is just 2. We found it to be 2. The problem says it's 2. On the case of vb, vb is just how y is changing with time. So therefore, the integral of 0 to t of vb dt is delta y. But we know, we happen to know that 3 of, what is it, 3 of VB plus VA equals nil. So where I have VA, I can substitute VA by, so I can rewrite this as VA is just minus 3VB, right? So I can, where I have VA, I can just say this is equal to the integral from 0 to T minus 3VB dt. And because this is a constant, it comes out of the integral. So we're left with running out of space here. Probably not the best idea to use the same page as before. But, so this, because it's a constant, this is just minus 3, 0 to t, vb dt. Cool. So this is equal to 2. So therefore, the whole thing is equal to negative 2 thirds. So in other words, from 0 to t, vb dt is equal to negative 2 thirds. And if you look closely, you'll see that this integral here exactly the same as this integral here. So that, therefore, that means that this guy here has to be exactly equal to this guy here. So delta y is negative 2 thirds. So where were we? We we're trying to find the velocity of b here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say 2 times minus 1.711 that we found times minus 2 thirds is equal to vb squared. Negative, negative. Those guys go away. Everybody's happy. So my VB is the square root. That gives me this, and this can be positive or negative. Square root can be positive or negative. We know that this is, uh, we found out already that V is going, sorry, uh, B is going upwards. So we know to choose the negative one, which is the one we're interested in, because acceleration drives the velocity. So therefore the velocity is upwards as well. Cool, so that's part A, and that's asking for the velocity of B 
uh, after the, the two meters push, right? So after the, the force has been has been applied for two meters. The other part, uh, part B, is asking for the tension on the cable. So what is T? But now on this approach here, finding T is easier, right, than in the previous one. Because check out, we actually already kind of did it here. Because then from this relationship here, we get that T is just the mass of B times the difference between acceleration of B and gravity divided by three. We have everything, everything we need. So that means that tension is just 25 times negative 1.711 minus 9.81. And all of this divided by three, which gives me the 96 that we got on the previous video as well. Okay, so this does it for this question. Again, I rushed it and did it quite fast because we already solved in the pro previous one. But on this one, what we did differently is that we approached, we didn't use any of the energy, uh, of the idea of energy conservation. We actually just only used the equations of motion, Newton, Newton's second law, pretty much. Okay, hopefully you understood this. If you have any questions, let me know. And if this video helped you out, just give it a like, and we'll talk soon.